Peter. Oh. Hello, Beefs. Thanks Hello. so much for joining us. Thanks so much for having me. In sunny honor. California. Sunny California. Sun's oh, up. fantastic. That is awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here. Um, for the people who haven't heard your lovely music, could you just describe to them what it's like and what you do? Uh, well, yeah, I, I'm known for being a musician, I guess, publicly, um, but I have been studying a lot of permaculture for the last few years. And then aside from studying, there has to be application. So, yeah, the music is a vibe. I also have a clothing line um, where I tie dye oh, wow. a bunch of cool stuff. And, you know, I do visual art, too. Anything artsy. But right now, my art focus is learning how to grow food. <laughs> hey, there's a lot of, lot of patterns and designs when you it comes know? to growing food and permaculture. That's fantastic. We, we could yeah. talk for a long time then. I'm a big permaculture nerd. I got into it a few years ago and I have yeah. just got bought my own place. So I'm trying to put all these things into practice uh, and it's in a very cold climate. So I'm completely new to it. So oh, I'm trying wow. to do, yeah, yeah. It's really exciting, but I got some advice from a teacher a while back and she's like, if you can do nothing for the first 12 months and just observe like, all the seasons uh, and just look at look at the patterns and your aspects then you're gonna be much better off so that's that's what i'm doing now it's a bit lazy i have nothing's really been done it's super messy but i'm hoping um, no. i like you said learn. i do have some chickens and the chickens have been a challenge to the garden too you know there's <laughs> they're very smart and um yeah. they love to eat your garden so <laughs> i've had to get really creative and uh with them and you know try to figure out how we can all live in harmony together and you know people think oh Beebs is this crazy garden chicken lady now and it's like no I just really you know want to be more in tune with the planet that I live on you know like I it's funny I had this one chicken all mm -hmm. during long I would have families return her or the explorer and it was so crazy. Little kids would be like, oh, it's a chicken. And oh, I was like, yeah, that's so where cute. eggs come from. And they're like, this is where eggs come from? And I'm like, okay, yeah, we're that <laughs> far now. <laughs> like, all right. So then I, you know, yeah, it forced me to like, we are. we're that far, you know? And so it, for, it kind of forced me, sorry, make me think, okay, as a musician, you know, my whole message the whole time has always been about community and building together and doing all this stuff together. And, you know, you can't, I can't go and my other, you know, mission was like, we need, we should be growing gardens. It's like, I can't be going around telling people what I think we should be doing until I can fully realize that for my own life, you know? And so that's why I've been so excited to partner with you and Subpod and, you know, learn. I'm constantly learning and the foundation of permaculture, especially when gardening is building soil. That's the most important part that I've learned and how, how important it is to have this balance of, all these good microbes and bugs and it's just like your body and it's such a good representation um especially as we've all been facing you know health crises and you know food's getting more expensive and you know even our organic food here in the united states is usually flown in from somewhere else it's like we have all the fruit all year round and it's like those things don't grow <laughs> all year round everywhere that was flown in mm -hmm. from somewhere else from thousands of miles away and um, you know, I learned a lot of the food that we eat, even from the grocery store, even organic produce. Food can be grown out of dead soil, but that doesn't make it nutrient dense, you know. Mm -hmm. And so we're hungrier more often because even the organic food that we may be eating is A, coming from super far away. And B, yeah. may, maybe it's organic, but it was also potentially grown in dead soil, meaning that yeah. it's not nutrient dense. So um, it could look been, the part. It, it can, can look, look. Apart, but just like a human, a human can look healthy and still be sick and stuff. And that's it's a just, great analogy. Yes, yeah. I love that. I've never and, thought about it that way. Yeah, it's true, you know, and, yeah. you know, having to focus on my own health, I have an autoimmune condition and, you know, I look like a healthy person, but inside my body is <laughs> attacking itself all the time. And so I've been on this holistic right. journey and food journey of how to heal myself through food, through lowering stress levels, that comes with gardening too. Spending time in nature, the ritual of watering your garden in the morning, not rushing through it, you know, really looking at the soil and everything that's growing in it and coming out and counting how many things have grown is so in incredibly good for your mental health, you know? And it reminds me always that it takes time for things to grow, including myself, you know, <laughs> every that's, day. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
Well, oh, there's there's so much I want to speak to on that. I mean, the first one is the the ability to get full while eating nutrient dense food. I remember my first experience doing that. I I um, was part of a compost workshop maybe six years ago now, and the guy had some silver beet just growing out of his compost. He's like, just go ahead, eat it. I ate it. I was like properly full from just like a salad, just greens. And I was like, what? I've never felt this yeah. before. And I, I just started inquiring yeah. about it. And he was like, yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's properly nutrient dense. And I was like, what? That's incredible. And so it really does make a difference. And I'm starting to feel it now. I haven't been growing my own food because I just moved and eating a lot of stuff at the, at the supermarket. And I find myself reaching for those packets of chips, just empty calories. I'm like, I'm not full. And that's my- I'm not full. If I can get... I'm not full. And if I can get to a point, I really do hate going to the grocery store because it's Mm -hmm. filled with temptation of things I should not be putting into my body. And I have definitely learned over the years coping mechanism of food. You know, I have comfort foods that I want to eat when I don't feel good or when I'm feeling down or when I'm feeling happy. There's all, you know, but it's usually sugar based and processed food based. And Mm -hmm. those aren't those things aren't great to put in into my body. So I don't love going to the grocery store because I don't feel that I'm strong enough yet to um, always ward off those temptations. So in my mind, if I can just keep learning about you know, my own community, what uh, farms exist in my own community and co-ops and also be contributing what I can to those um, co-ops because they're, gardening is a full-time job. If you're growing a decent amount of food, once it's grown, it's mm-hmm. taking care of it. Then once it's grown, it's harvesting mm-hmm. it. And you People don't realize like how much food can be grown in such a small space. Enough food for at least you and your neighbor, a couple neighbors, you know, or your whole family, yes. you know, and, and that takes time. Then, you know, processing it into jams or tomato sauce Mm -hmm. or whatever, you know, those things take time to um, process too. And so I think the only way to really, you know, do this is as, you know, we have to all learn together. That's why I've been so excited to work with you is like, I'm learning every day. I don't have all the answers. I don't even know what I'm doing half the time, but it's so exciting and so fun. And I know anytime I stick my hands in the soil, I'm learning, you know, I'm feeling, you know, what's happening in, in the soil. So I'll give you a quick, um, yeah, let's, let's tour. do a tour. I, I do yeah. want to do a shout out to green thumb daddy. He's a grower in, in Colorado and he says, God bless the growers, farmers and ranchers. And I really respect that because I didn't realize how hard and how long it takes to grow food until I started it myself. And I had a whole bunch of respect for the farmers out there. And then realizing you can get a bag of carrots for a couple of dollars. It's like, what that, that does not how? add up. How is that possible? Yeah. How- <laughs> Yeah, same thing. What? When I was growing food, I was like, wait a minute, there's only one radish per sprout because I just buy a bunch of them at the store for like $2. <laughs> and I'm yeah, like, yeah. oh my gosh. Like, it, I think growing the food, you know, when you're growing, for me, I like uh, some, I just have this blueberry plant just now producing some blueberries and they're like coveted because there's only like six at a time, you know? And yeah. it just, I buy a whole package of blueberries at the store without thinking about how much time it took to grow or anything you know we're so disconnected from our food source and yeah shout mm-hmm. out to the farmers and people who have been dedicating their lives and their time to for, for us to learn from to build on um i think it's it's so important and you know especially now the last i mean not that it hasn't been a hot topic for quite some time but you know everyone's talking about environmental change and all these different things and it's like yeah, we can shout that the screen, the, the the sky is falling, but until we have little, little small things that we can each contribute and do, and I think a garden, just even a small garden, is a really cool way to start feeling like, okay, I'm learning, I'm doing something, and and if you have kids, then your kids can learn, and then they can take that to the next level, and you know, it just starts this whole process. We're not going to change everything in our lifetime, but maybe, you know, I don't know, but yeah, we can contribute something for the next set of peoples, you know, that come through. Absolutely. I, yeah. I love that. So I, this, I'm going to ask people that I want, what do you, we, we, they going to take us on a bit of a tour now, but I know she's got chooks and compost and, and she's growing some beautiful tomatoes and she just said blueberries. What would you guys like to see out there? Um, now take us through, Beeves, and um, oh, okay. that's, that's just your sub pod there. I didn't know in, if in I that. could show the other plant that's growing right now. It's legal sure. in California, but you're in Wales, so I didn't want to get too crazy. With it. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, that's this okay. Is, I've had to. 
this garden box was open um, where my sub pod is now, but because the chickens, I have two younger chickens that know how to fly over their coop. So okay. I've had to put some chicken wire around it to keep it protected until I kind of figure out that situation. But right now I have right. some potatoes growing. Um, and right. the cool thing that I learned awesome. about potatoes, you can take those little, you know, how sometimes you let potatoes sit out too long and, mm -hmm. um, they gr start growing. Right. So when they <laughs> have that little sprout on them, you cut them in half where this, where the little eye is on the top and you can just plant them and you plant them in the bottom layer of soil. Um, and then you don't fill the whole thing up with soil and plant them. You do it layer by layer because potatoes grow, they're a root you know, vegetables. So they grow layer by layer. So this is probably like right now at four layers of, there's four layers of potatoes growing oh, under there. Awesome. My sub pod is, sub pod soil is looking pretty good. I just added more stuff to it the other day. It has a lot of life in there. There's all kinds of amazing creatures that I've never even seen in the dirt until I have that. <laughs> and then I have some, um, I these some are nice some, monitor. Yeah, these are some yellow bell, I believe, is what these oh, ones yep. are. Um, okay. Yeah. And um, this is the blueberry. Oh, dang. One of the chickens ate uh, the blueberry yeah. that was there. I was saving to show you guys. No. But I know. <laughs> they're the worst. <laughs> um, and then over here, I have some mint. Uh, right now, I have started some golden berries, which I don't know if you know what golden berries are. but they're No, really I've never heard of them. Oh my gosh, let me just golden tell you, berries. golden berries are nature's gift. They they look <laughs> kind of like these yellow tomatoes, but they're completely round. And yeah. they're very sweet and just amazingly delicious and really um, packed high with antioxidants, actually. Uh, um, and they taste and amazing. Then, they sound like it. Oh my gosh, they're so good. They're so good. And then in here, in this other box, you got which some I've ginger? Been eating, I've got some ginger, some Thai ginger. Um, nice. There's uh, cantaloupe. I have yes. some squish shards started. I had this whole garden going better before until the chickens ate it, but we're back in action. So some cucumber. Um, there's some beet starters in there. And I think I have some kale, a little bit of kale, oh, baby nice. kale started right now. So, do you and grow most of your stuff from seeds? Uh, yes, I grew all that from seeds. Yeah. The ginger was just leftover organic ginger that I had from store-bought. And I, it had gone kind of like too old. These, this is, it's a, this, these are all hens. Um, none of them are roosters. This is Dusty. That's Dusty, little dude, even though it's a hen. This little dude, because I was convinced it was a rooster before I really knew. And uh, that's sketchy. And I don't know where this little baby is. There's another one somewhere. Hi, Dusty. So um, then we go, I've been using the What's your favorite? What's your What's your favorite part about having chickens? What like? They're just the most fascinating creatures in the entire universe. They're little baby dinosaurs. You know, <laughs> like it's. They're very, very, very smart. They're incredibly intelligent, and I think the most fascinating thing that I've been learning is like domesticated chickens. I believe so far in my research, and you know, I always implore everyone to do their own research for sure. But so far, I've learned that. Uh, you know, chickens were domesticated like 3,500 years ago. In the wild, it, there is no like wild chicken. They they speculate that it came from a jungle fowl in Asia. Yes, is yes. Where the chickens, you know, came from. And um, and in the wild, they would only lay 12 eggs a year for their yeah. flock. And I've chickens, read that as well. That's wild. Yeah, that blew so our my chickens, mind. Yeah, it's crazy. So our our current day chickens, um, because of of the poultry industry, and I'm sure you know just for feeding people they now are produced to lay uh 200 eggs a year 200 to 250 eggs a year which actually causes a lot of osteoporosis in chickens because they're producing so much calcium being their bodies mm -hmm. are having to pr produce so much calcium so um if you have chickens the thing you can do is feed them their eggshells back to them which will help oh, wow. them they really love it, and it's That's also not good. only good for composting, but also for the to feed back to the chickens. They will eat their own eggs. Cool. Um, Do you crush it up? Yeah, I crush and it up. Put it in their feed. Yeah. Um, also, oyster shells are really good um, for that, and um, 
yeah, just keep, I, I give them a lot of fresh um, veggies and fruit and because whatever they're eating, I'm eating too, you know? Yeah. And yeah, I yeah. Used to feel really bad. I'd be Once I started finding all, all these facts about chickens, I started feeling so bad. I'm like, I'm so sorry, ladies. I feel your struggle. I'm so sorry that you have to lay 200 yeah. eggs. So I really go out of my way to like spoil them and, hang, you know, really make them feel comfortable because I can't go backwards in time. These chickens exist and they're here and I just have to give them the best life that they can have and appreciate, you know, what they provide every day. And they're know? super friendly, aren't they? I've, I've never really developed a, 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 bit, a nice bond with a chicken before, but I have met people that have, like, got chickens that are their best friends. And I've seen photos of you with, like, chicken on the shoulder. Like, yeah, do, you, like do you see them at the same level as, like, maybe a dog or a cat yeah. that you could... Yeah, right. Well, they're kind of... Um, they're, it's kind of they're more like dogs you know um right. they'll follow you around you you know they'll come when you call them they all yeah. have their own personalities and their own little voices and you know um a couple of mine are really friendly and a couple of them are just like i'll tolerate you <laughs> at best you know <laughs> um but yeah it's it's the chicken um poop is great fertilizer for the garden and great to compost because it's really high um in phosphorus and nitrates and stuff for the for the garden so aside mm -hmm. from the worms that i put in there i also put the chicken poop in in the garden as well which is pretty what? cool you know it's a whole circle of life oh, over here a, you know that's a great system i've got two goats which are huge and i, I love them they're like like seriously like donkey size and um are they I mean, it, what kind of sorry goats? are they newbie oh goats? they were like their story was that they were um they they grew up as like dairy goats or maybe meat goats. And so that they're basically really big. Uh, but what has happened is that uh, the, the owner had to go over, uh, move, move across country. And she actually grew them up in her house with diapers. So they're like dogs. They love people. And then her friend couldn't find anyone. Like they were going to get sold for me. And then me and my partner are like, no, nah, we'll, we'll take them. Uh, but it's compl completely different in terms of like getting a, like, like integrating those animals into into our like uh, out into our garden because goats just eat everything. Yeah. Whereas like chooks, you can put them under trees and it's fine. But goats are just like demolished, which they're mm -hmm. great for weeds, but you've got to move them on. Um, yeah. But I'm I'm curious to know how you integrate your chooks into your backyard. Like, at what point do you put in the chooks and take them out? Like, what's your system? I mean the the chickens. Yes. They, um, yeah. They. I don't allow them in the garden as much anymore because they're just so insanely destructive. Mm -hmm. um, yes. They, that's why I had to like basically put my garden in prison <laughs> because of the chickens. But um, they do, I mean, they do get out and I do feed them. Actually, let's do it. Let's do it right now. Cause this really, yeah. out. they get so excited when I feed and it is really good feeling to, you know, even though I don't want them in the garden, destroying the whole thing, cause they will eat it in like literally five minutes. Yeah. Um, things that I've had planted and growing for three months, it will be demolished in like, so I'm just picking some tomatoes from the garden. Let me grab a couple more. Um, they loved eating tomatoes from the, from here it's like their favorite treat probably i would say um how are you gonna do this? Have to be really one, careful one i can't each. let them see me doing it because they're yeah. so <clears throat> that they'll be like oh that's where she got it from yeah, or yeah, definitely yeah. Get it next time for sure um i one time i heard that ch chickens couldn't taste spice and i have all these peppers and i don't use them all okay so, now let me test this out are these chickens really gonna be down with the spice and they ate it well that plant they never touched that plant, but once they knew what it was and they mm -hmm. liked it, they destroyed the whole thing. <laughs> right. so really, really, uh -oh. really. Chick, 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 chick. Come on. Constantly oh, learning they're... every day. That's great. Here they are. You guys want tomato? Hello, girls. Oh, they really like get down with it. Okay, okay, okay. Where's the other one? Where's Scrappy? Or oh, did I get Oh, <laughs> we're looking for. um. The gray one, that's little baby. I don't know where uh, she is. I'm actually wondering if she got out. I've been trying not to worry about it this whole time, but oh, she's laying an egg. Oh, uh, cool. <laughs> she's safe. She was just laying an egg. Um, so yeah, you know, I, it's it's all a learning curve, even to the point where, 
you know, I've had a lot of, I found some tomato horned worms, which I don't know if you guys have those in. <laughs> yeah, we don't have them in, in Australia, but I've, I've read about them a lot because our community in the States always talk about yeah. them. They're, they're they, huge. They're, oh my gosh, I literally screamed when I picked it up and I'm not like, <laughs> but these things are very intimidating looking and huge, like so huge, <laughs> I won't even eat them. They're just like, we don't know what to do with that. That thing's giant. But oh, I, really? <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't. They're like, I don't even know. That thing's way too big. And so I was like, how do I do pest control, you know, um, with the tomato and everything? And someone suggested ladybugs or praying mantis. And so I, but I was like, are those even native to where I live in California? And so I looked it up and they're not. And, yeah. um, and those are things that we have to think about when we're like sharing information. That's the one thing I've really been focused on lately is like, learning what's native to your area and growing that, you know, instead mm -hmm. of like trying to have all this exotic stuff, whatever is native to your area is going to grow the best, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, so then I, I was getting annoyed because all these little birds were flying into the garden, to the tomatoes. I thought they were eating the tomatoes. And I was like, dang, I'm going to have to put a top. Oh, sorry. You're good. We just got some advice from Green Thumb Daddy, who also has chickens. And he said, they'll eventually eat them. And he also said chickens eat mice too. Wow. That's. They eat, how do you know that? <laughs> yeah. I, I, don't, I would love to see that happen. Do they like gang up like all four of them and Gosh. hustle a, a mouse? Or like, I, yeah, I'm, I'm really curious. I guess you said, yeah, they're, they're little, little dinosaurs. So they've yeah. got that instinct in them. <laughs> Honestly, don't eat chicken, especially. As, I wasn't a big eating chicken fan before I got chickens, but even less so obviously after him. And also I just 100% in my mind, a chicken is all half reptile. Like, and I just like, I don't, yeah. like I don't want to, why is all reptile taste like chicken? So when you, people are like, I ate alligator. It tastes like chicken. It's like, cause it's a reptile. <laughs> yeah. Right. You know? I've never had alligator. That's I'm curious about that. Well, how, how about those horn caterpillars? So okay. how, what did so, you find in the end? I found two giant ones real. I mean, they were probably like, yeah longer wow. well, they were probably about that long and about yeah that fat they were Jeez. and um so i thought these birds were coming in and eating the tomatoes and then i really had time to sit in the yard the other day and observe what was happening with all these little sparrows and they mm -hmm. were actually in the tomato plants eating all the worms off of them and i was like oh wow. troll. thank you and i you <laughs> and i didn't even realize until i had the time to really observe i was just mm. birds go in and assuming they were taking food and and bouncing but they're really just eating all the all the pests on the plants so shout oh, out to the sparrows you know they're really that's killing. a good lesson yeah this is a good lesson for me to learn to not mm. assume and and stay and observe you know so how big is your property james how big is your backyard um maybe like i don't know i actually don't like, actually like don't. a normal suburban yeah like like it doesn't it's like a you know the backyard is probably like a half lot so maybe okay i don't know a 16th of an acre yeah yeah, yeah. No. No, I, I can't i can't tell but it looks like a pretty normal i'm just thinking for people out there that have like got don't have much space like you so if you don't you do. have a space a vertical garden that's what i'm also about mm -hmm. to do instead of oh, doing great. these planter boxes because i can now have the sub pod to make all the soil in um and compost in i can move that soil over to different parts of the yard and i think vertical gardening is really really good way to utilize the most you know the most amount of space and you can even make them i think there's plans online where you can make them with just a five gallon bucket a fish a fish tank pump and some pvc pipe you know right. um yeah. which is the diy you know way to make it right. and the other way the other thing you can do is microgreens microgreens are yeah. really um great way to utilize very little space i have a friend she's an urban gardener um mm -hmm. shout out to little plant farms out of santa monica um so i've been learning a lot about microgreen gardening through her and um it's pretty amazing how much it grows it's the turnaround time on it is very fast because you're just waiting till their sprouts basically what you're eating is little sprouts you know and um super high nutrients i talk about nutrient super dense high wow. and very nutrient dense very nutrient dense you can do sunflower radish broccoli kale kohlrabi 
Um, there's what, what does she use for her soil? I mean, does she use a, a compost or like a, she's a mixture using, of... I, I believe she's using a mixture. That I, she doesn't, she's not using um, dirt. It's a water-based. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So there are other ways, you know, to garden, you know, if you, even if you don't have the room for a full sub pod or you don't have the room for, for soil, um, there are still other alternative ways to be able to grow food in your own community. And I really encourage people like right, right now I do have this, you know, big the space to grow all this food. And my goal is to do it with my neighborhood. So my neighbors come and they help shout out Tori. My neighbors come and help, um, you know, help with the garden. And the goal is that we have enough food for at least the few neighbors that I have, you know, that have been coming to help and, Oh, that's wonderful. Um, trade food with people. Oh, the last thing I didn't show you is this thing is pretty wild. Um, you got you guys have passion fruit there? No. Yeah. 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 Well, oh, I can't grow right. them down here because I'm I'm too far south. But up, look at this up thing. north. This yeah, thing. that is a monster. <laughs> this is a monster. That looks that amazing. Just never that is ah, oh, you are lucky. Those chooks would love that when they fall to the ground. Oh, oh. yeah. They're gonna love it. We've. I've already. Oh, there's one right there. That it looks. That's yeah. Breakfast. There's gonna be hundreds, if hundreds. They're oh, really. Yeah. They're really growing really great this season. Fantastic. And that yeah. was that. There already before you came, or no, you... no. Um, planted those two years ago. They were. Oh just, wow. They were only maybe, not even as tall as me, two okay. years ago, and now it's uh. A jungle <laughs> awesome good work so, it looks yeah. like you've got a, and it's also creating a bit of a shade canopy as well for you oh so yeah a mm -hmm. few so purposes out of that plant the whole fence so that all mm -hmm. both sides of neighbors also get passion fruit on their set because they're all like yeah we love passion fruit make it grow over here you know so i love that i, lo I love that aspect in permaculture where like you do like you have chickens and you can get multiple things from them. You have eggs, you have fertilizer, you can even use the fur, you can use the meat if you want. Yeah. It's just like, how can you grow something or get something, but then have multiple uses for it? Yeah. Um, because with plants, you can have shade or you can turn those vines into something and use them with you. Well, food, that's so. what well, I learned recently too, was that passion flower vine and like the leaves and uh, the flowers themselves are really in, a, a good sedative tea, like chamomile. Yes, yes, uh, yes, yes. And so I've just started harvesting those and drying those out and, uh, you know, trying to, you know, figure out, you know, it's all, and I have rosemary, which, and ginger, which is great in tea. So now it's like, making my own teas and my own tea tinctures and there's we have marigold and hibiscus and dandelion growing around here as well so you know there there is a there's a couple cool apps like plant identifier apps and mm -hmm. um, mushroom identifier apps and you know i really feel like we all spend money on whatever netflix whatever all the things these apps and services that we use but i mean I just feel like that's the one of the coolest ones you could get because everywhere I go in my neighborhood, I can just point at something and it's going to – like I can be on my own field trip every day just learning about the stuff around me that I'm seeing that I totally pass by. <laughs> oh, oh, that's sage or, you know, that's a mm. uh, certain kind of aloe or, you know what I mean? All these different things. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, there's yes. There's to explore in the world um, and just in our own neighborhoods and I feel like, you know, we don't do that much. Also, my neighborhood – there are a lot of fruit trees and so I had this idea I want to go to the they just fall no one eats them they're just there mm -hmm. I mean we're still going to the grocery store I'm like what are we doing <laughs> you know like you I have know, a right? lemon tree you have a whole fig tree like what are we doing with our lives right now so I want to start kind of now that um we're kind of coming out of all this lockdown and craziness I wanted to go around to the neighbors and just say hey can we harvest your trees and you know, we'll give you whatever you need and we'll distribute the rest to the neighborhood. And um, also during during lockdown, when I was starting the garden, you have to weed out the garden. Once you, if you're directly sowing into the bed, they, a lot of them grow together and you have to kind of start weeding mm -hmm. them out. <clears throat> so I was just making whole with those ones that I was taking out, I was putting them in other little containers and leaving them out front for other neighbors to take to start their own garden. So there's just- Oh, that's lovely. Yeah, there's so many different things you can do to 
to stimulate education and community in a really fun way, you know? Wow, that is fantastic. I love that. And thank you for like, that. It starts so no. many conversations. Oh, I think really? People get mad at me when conversations like, start. I'm like, I can't tell you about gardening. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I gotta go. That was the whole point. That's why we, we created the uh, that clothing line. Like, you know, of course, it's made out of hemp and it's great material and everything, but it's like, it's cool just like walking around with with a, a slogan that you love and it's about it's about gardening and it just gets the ball rolling like feed the soil feed the world what does that mean oh it's it's actually about how our soil healthy soil really creates healthy people and everything in between like it is the foundation so like getting people to think having those conversation starters um, can be life changing I think I, we've heard some good stories there actually. It's so, it's so important. Like, I, I really feel, you know, for, for me, I was raised on McDonald's, you know, that was what I was <laughs> raised on. That was my baseline standard for my body, like what it was used to consuming. And so, you know, that's how we get these unhealthy eating habits or, you know, sugar, yeah. sugars, like processed sugar is like one of the most addictive. I'm definitely highly addicted to sugar and really have to watch it. But again, mm. through learning how to garden and learning about my own health and my own body and which foods should really be going in it, I found coconut and dates and all these mm -hmm. other things that are very, they totally satisfy me as much as sugar, but they're not sugar. You know, they're not processed. You know? Have you, this is a bit out there for people watching. So have you heard of the potato diet? I've, I've done a, a, a couple, like there's lots of fads out there. And this one was just, I have a colleague who's actually uh, does Dr. Compost and he's a PhD scientist. Um, and like, so I trust his opinion. He, he researches everything. Yeah. And basically the potato diet is, is that if you want to kickstart, restart your, your gut biome, um, you eat potatoes for a minimum of three days straight, with like no oils. You can do salt and peppers, but that's either steamed um, in the oven or boiled. Okay. And then you do that for three days. And what happens is the resistant starch actually feeds the good bacteria and starves out the bad bacteria. So it's a very gentle way of like fasting, so to speak. But I've done it a few times now. And it was afterwards, like, like I'll be, I'll sometimes get in habits where like I'll eat heaps of stuff. And like afterwards, I just don't feel like it. I'm like, oh, cool. No, I don't yeah. actually don't feel like the sugar anymore. I don't feel like eating fried packet of chips. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's been really helpful for me. And I'm sure there's lots of other things out there, but. I think it's also because our bodies start learning what it feels like to feel yes. good. We've been functioning with such a low amount of fuel for so long that our bodies are like, hold up, I like this. And some, and it will eventually override yes. your cravings because it's like, no, remember that doesn't make us feel good, you know? Yes. And, and how much research is going into uh, like how our gut um, bacteria and microbiology controls our serotonin levels. So it's actually just this pathway back and forth. Uh, and so like how much are we controlled by our, by our biology? There is more microbes in our body, foreign microbes than there are human cells. So, you know, it's, it is really just mind boggling when we like start to think about all our cravings and maybe some of our behaviors oh, are controlled yeah. by our microbes. It reminds me of this book. I think it's called 1% Human. And it's oh. about how our whole body is made up of all these microbes and organisms, all these little bugs, and only 1% of us is not that, you know? It's wow, this functioning like a great system. Book. It's a super cool book. Um, and it's just about how our whole system is actually, I mean, realistically, we we take so many things for granted, like breathing. I don't wake up in the morning caught, like thinking about having to breathe. My body is already, it processes food. It does all these different things on its own and that I just don't, you know, I take credit for. I woke up this morning. Well, I don't know if it was all me. Like there's definitely things that are uh, working inside my body that I haven't, that I'm so not aware of. And that's the, mm -hmm. the funny part. I came up with this idea the other day. It's like, if your own garden's not popping, don't come knocking, you know, like, I don't, I don't want to get into divisive conversations with people. I don't want to argue about anything. I want to learn. I want to learn and I want to apply those things because whatever side of political spectrums you're on, or, you know, I just look at it as sports teams, whatever sports team you're on, it's the, the game remains the same and we are all agreeing that this isn't working. So what are, what are we going to do moving forward to create the biome in our soil? Just like we need to create healthy biome in our own bodies. And mm -hmm. again, I just think that 
gardening is such a good metaphor of what we need to be doing inside of our own bodies. Instead of worrying about all these external things constantly and stressing ourselves out, it's like, why don't we just take the time to sit outside and enjoy the sun and just watch, you know, talk to the plants, sing to them, you know, like the sings, Mm -hmm. you know, sing songs, plant seeds. Like I come out here and sing, I talk to the plants. I tell them how much I love them, how much I appreciate their growing. And that's a good way for me to learn how to interact with the world when it seems so out of balance sometimes. And I feel like I don't know how to communicate with people. All I have to do is smile and, you know, put out love because I'm not going to sit at the vegetables and yell at them while they're growing. Like, why aren't you food yet? Why aren't you (laughs) viable nutrient dense food yet? It's because they're growing and that's what humans are doing too. We're growing. We don't know. We don't know what we're doing. You know, we're just trying to figure it out. Mm -hmm. I love that. No, that's, (laughs) that's great. It sounds like gardening is taking you on a whole new journey, man. And it's, it's come inwards as well. A lot, like a lot of that, uh, self-growth and looking at yourself is is through gardening which is i've heard stories and within my own my own personal story of permaculture having that change the way i look at things um, but i will say thank you and wrap this up babes but it's been an absolute pleasure thank for, you so just, much peter for having me it has been great pod and getting me all fired extra fired up about gardening and extra fired <clears throat> to learn uh about building soil and it's so crazy that you're in Wales and here I am in California and we're, you know. Oh damn! Spread- no, no, I'm in Australia. I mean Australia. South is that South? No, Australia. Yes, well, like um, very Cold South like Wales. Tasmania, Tasmania, okay. Ireland, Australia. Yeah, we're across the world. You know, we're I guess kind of across the world. Different. Across <laughs> the world, fourteen hour time difference, and yeah. we get to connect all the way across yeah. the world through gardening, and I think that's the most beautiful thing. So thank you for what you created and. The, the fire it sparked in a lot of people, you know, it's really beautiful and we appreciate you for sure. You're welcome. We are welcome. Well, thanks so much and keep yeah. sharing lots of stuff about your garden and chooks. I'm sure lots of people out there are interested and there's this. Thank you so much everybody yeah, for joining. You, Peter. Have a great day. You Take too. Care. Thanks so much. Talk soon. Bye.